Okay, so let's look at this question. Uh, it says, suppose some amount of work done on a proton, uh, some amount of work is done on a proton to accelerate it from rest up to some speed. Okay, so what the question is giving us is, it's giving us this information that the speed of the particle is 0 0.997, um, it's given us the rest energy of the particle, uh, mc squared is 938.3 MeV, and it's, when it's asking for work done, um, so I like to think in terms of the total energy. So um, let me just write down usual definitions. So beta is defined as speed of something um, in the unit of speed of light. Given that beta, we can write the Lorentz factor gamma as one over square root of one minus beta squared. And um, given these two quantities, we can write down the relativistic energy as gamma mc squared and relativistic momentum as gamma mv or beta c. I like to just have this, uh, I have them memorized, and I like to write them down as a kind of the reminder of uh, some uh, expressions that's going to be useful. So if I'm thinking of having a mass that started out at, at rest, and then it was some work was done on it, so it was pushed, and at some point it ends up with some speed, some uh, kinetic energy, then when it asks about the amount of work done, it is asking about amount of kinetic energy that it has, work kinetic energy theorem, still works in special relativity. And um, so kinetic energy in the context of special relativity is simply the total energy or the relativistic energy minus the uh, rest energy or gamma mc squared minus mc squared. So we have beta. Um, so I can calculate the numerical value of gamma. Um, and I guess I have to plug in all the numbers. Yeah, let's do it that way. So, uh, so using my calculator, I think uh, this is probably the cleanest way to do it. I have already uh, defined the variables, I think. Um, so I can actually just write this out, gamma times m times, uh, do I want to ignore c? Let me ignore so the c. So c is equal to one <laughs> um, minus m. So that's an expression, I think. Oh, wait. Oh, I haven't defined it. So let me define m. as one of the variables I might be using. So gamma, oops, gamma times m minus m. Yeah, that's an expression. So given this expression, I can do substitutions until I can plug in the numbers that I have. So gamma, I want to substitute it uh, in terms of beta, one over square root of one minus beta squared. Good, I'm just being lazy, so I'm not doing this by hand, I'm just letting the program do it. Once I have that, then I can substitute in my rest energy, uh, 938.3 MeV, and my beta, which was given, 0.997. So with that, it says, yeah, I guess that is right. That is a super high, yeah. So, um, oops. So that is uh, 1.1184 MeV. So 10 times its rest energy. Yeah, I guess that's right, uh, yeah. At the given speed, what is the momentum of the proton in unit? You know what? I think we might be in the ultra relativistic limit. I might be able to just put this in and it might say it's correct. Uh, all right, it's not. All right, so let's actually calculate the, um, the, what the correct uh, relativistic momentum is. So um, the expression I have is um, relativistic momentum is gamma times m times beta. Again, c is equal to one, the way I'm doing calculation right now. 
So I need to substitute in what gamma is in terms of beta. And once I've done that, then I can substitute in everything else that's given. Yeah, that was pretty close. Um, oh, okay, 938.3. I was wondering, I did. I was doing mine and I was like, why did I get, I was off by four, but oh. you used 938.3 and I just used 938. So that 0.3 is probably accounted for that. Yeah. Four um, mega electron volts. Depending on the question, uh, some questions might require greater than 1% precision. Uh, okay. I'm not sure. So in this question, I think this number is slightly outside the 1%. So, or actually a lot outside the 1%. So must not be ultra relativistic yet. Uh, okay, last one. For comparison, calculate the momentum of the proton at half the given speed. Ah, yeah. That's why I love doing it this way because then all I have to do is just change this number into half of what it was. Uh, momentum, oh, momentum, all right. I will just only do the half, second number. Yeah, 539.6. So, and it, this is a number sense question because um, our non-relativistic intuition says that when you uh, reduce the speed to half, your momentum should be half, but when one of your two speeds are very relativistic, um, when you make the speed a half, your momentum is much less than a half. I mean, you know, 539.6 divided by 1206, that's 4.5%. Uh, that's <laughs> it's 10th of a half. <laughs> um, so, uh, so let's do the next question. Um, I think I should still be dealing with the yeah, work. Let's say that accelerating a particle from rest to speed uh, nine, requires that much mass, and that accelerating same particle to that requires work to. Uh, all right, I, I guess we gotta write some things down. So, so it's now slightly more complicated. So I think I can still use this portion of what I've written down before for the work one because you are starting from rest, whatever kinetic energy you gained is that work one. But for work two, uh, I have to write down a new expression because really it's the change in kinetic energy you are looking for. And uh, here's a wonderful thing. When you are looking for change, you can just treat that as a change in the total energy because your rest energy will just cancel out from the your total energy final minus the total energy initial. So you don't have to just, you, no need to worry about your rest energy, just uh, you can write down in terms of, okay, my gamma final final mc squared minus my gamma intermediate. So let me call that gamma one. At the end of the work one, there will be gamma one. Gamma one mc squared. So that will be uh, work done by uh, in the second step. Okay, so having done that much work, I think I can do the rest in my SageMath uh, program. So let's write down, um, so I think I need to declare a couple additional variables. I need um, gamma one and I need the gamma final. Um, I think that's everything I need. Oh, uh, wait, I need my beta one, that's gonna be 0 0.9, and beta final, that's going to be 0 0.99. Okay, let's see if I forgot anything about the short. So, uh, my expression for the work done in the first step is going to be gamma one times mass, C is equal to one minus M, um, let me make sure that's the correct expression, good. W2 will be what I've written down, gamma final times M, C is equal to one minus gamma one times M. And that's W2, yeah. So um, really the answer here is W2 over W1, that 
is the answer, but you just need to plug in the numbers. So let me do that um, tedious work of plugging the numbers using SageMath. Um, so I'm going to re-express gamma in terms of beta, and then I can just plug it in beta. So gamma 1 is going to be 1 over square root of 1 minus beta 1 squared. Gamma 2, uh, gamma final is 1 over square root of 1 minus beta final squared. And after having done the substitution, the second set of substitution plug, uh, plugs in beta 1 is equal to 0 0.9. Beta final is 0 0.99. So hopefully that gives me a yeah, numerical value, 3.70. So 3.7. So here, again, this is a number sense question. And what's um, meant to be surprising is that even though change in speed is less here, a tenth of the change in speed here, you actually need to do more work, about four times as much work to make this change in speed from the what was basically non-relativistic acceleration, mostly. So, and that's just so yeah, due. And that's just due to its proximity to the speed of light. Yeah. That's why yeah. it takes so much more work to make such an even smaller yeah. gain in speed. Yeah, and every nine you add. Oh, yeah, let's give this a try with a, um, do I want to? Um, yeah. So every nine you add in terms of energy and momentum means a, a tremendous amount of uh, energy and momentum. So, yeah. So yeah, so those are the two number sense questions, just uh, trying to, you know, helping reshape your intuition about uh, work and energy that's uh, mostly formed around uh, the non-relativistic situations. And in relativistic scenarios, a lot of those change. And I think I've done, uh, done that lecture of trying to make a sense of the parameters gamma and beta. And the reason I wanted to do that lecture and I've done it, it's on the lectures, is um, it's, uh, that's kind of the distillation of that relativistic uh, intuition for numbers in relativity.